What's up, people? This is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. Use logic, use reason, and realize that religion is fake. For this video, I'm going to say something that will be very offensive to some people. And when I say some people, I don't mean the majority of people who's watching this video. I mean those believers that stroll across this video or follow my stuff just to comment in the sections and say what they have to say. But I'm going to say it. And I thought about this long and hard. And, it, and this is what it comes down to. And, and, and prove me wrong. Prove me wrong with real stuff. Prove me wrong with real stuff. Watch this. I'm going to say it. Watch this. Here it goes. The Christian's God is text, talk, and excuses. Period. The Christian's God texts Talk, excuses. All right? That's what it is. Now in the age of information, when you uh, get into a discussion, debate, what have you, with the believer, Christian, now they have to refer you to text outside of the Bible. Why? Because the Bible doesn't have the same weight it used to have. It's not, it doesn't have that authority it used to once carry, even though nobody read it. People are just not believing it because, why? Because it says it in the Bible. That's just not good enough anymore. People are not just believing it because... You're reading something that was written a long time ago. Because if, say, watch this. If I wrote a lie in 1000 BCE, and now we're in 2020 CE, does that make the lie that I wrote in 1000 BCE or 3,020 years ago, is that lie because I wrote that lie 3,020 years ago, does time make that lie real now? No. If it was a lie then, it's not, a, it's not true because it's ancient. It's still a lie. That doesn't change. So now we're in the age where when you're dealing with Christians on, uh, on social media, they want to pull up videos uh, of people saying things. And, and like I, I, I'm saying, I always say that they're apologists, they're lying. An apologist is just a Christian liar trying to make the lie real because you don't have anything. If we go to the bottom, you still don't have a God, you still don't have a Jesus, you just have a bunch of talk and texts and excuses you're trying to make the lie real but it's still a lie they want to talk about what somebody mentioned here and most of the texts oh Josephus mentioned the Jesus here and I asked a question on one I said did, did, did he say did he say Jesus or, or Joshua or Yahshua which one was it I said that in, in the uh, woke Christian group. Funny, they were so quiet. Nobody wanted to say anything. Y'all normally talk all the time. But I was like, okay, y'all said Josephus said it. But are they saying Jesus, Joshua, or Yahshua? Quiet. Nobody answered it. Oh, Josephus mentioned Jesus. Did he mention Jesus? From a language that didn't exist? Because 
if you go back to the so-called Hebrew, or go back to the Hebrew, and you got Yahshua, or, or you got, uh, look, yeah, Yahshua, right? Yahshua and Joshua are the same names. So how do we get go from Yahshua to Joshua to Jesus? When Jesus looked more like Zeus than Jesus. And they'll spell it out in the Greek, you know, with the Greek letters. I get it. But even with that, where do we get the Jesus? It's the name that's above all names. Jesus. What about it's the name that's above all names. Jesus. No, it's Jesus. What does it matter how I say it? Because I'm like y'all say, the demons understand that's still his name. So whether I say Jesus or Jesus, Yahshua, Joshua, don't the demons get it? Well, I got to say Jesus in the last language, English language, for it to mean something. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. Which name was it? Because in Isaiah it said he should call his name Emmanuel. And it just said Emmanuel. Then when you go to Matthew, it says Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. It ain't said that back then. So it always appears as if they're making it up as they go. The text. You know, this person, oh, and by the way, where it was in uh, Josephus, Flavius Josephus' writings, where he mentioned so-called Jesus, yeah, it was already proved that's a forgery by the Christians because it didn't fit in with the rest of the writings. They added that in because they needed somebody who was historical to say, to mention their fake God, just like the rest of the Bible, to mention their fake, fake Messiah, fake Christ, to, to, to make it seem like it was real, but it wasn't real. This has always been the case with Christianity and what have you is always trying to use lies to make the myth real. But yeah, he, he didn't, Josephus didn't mention him. And why would it matter if Josephus mentioned him when Josephus was born after the supposed life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ? So that's like me talking to somebody now who was born uh, in 2001 after the death of Tupac and wants to talk about Tupac. You only know about Tupac from what you've learned about Tupac. I was alive when Tupac came around. When he spit his little verse, now I clad around when hanging down with the underground. I was around when that was the first thing Tupac had spit that everybody knew about. I was around then. And then when he dropped Tupac lips, Brenda had, you know, Brenda got a baby, and uh, and uh, uh, when my homies call, soldier story, all that. I was around then. I'll tell you about Tupac. How are you going to tell me about Tupac? I'm using for an example. When Tupac was killed, in fact, I mean, in fact, remember when Tupac, I remember where I was when Tupac was killed. Oh, no, no, when he died, shall I say. I was working at Burger King on J. Clyde Morris Boulevard in Newport News, Virginia, and everybody knew he had been shot. He was in the hospital. Like, Tupac died. We had no internet, no cell phones. We had none of that stuff. And it was like, because we thought he had got shot four or five times in the head. You know, it was Tupac, right? But he lived. So it was like, what? He died? We, we couldn't believe that. But if somebody would have said three days later, yo, Tupac is back. He in the studio working on a new album. I thought he died. Yeah, yeah, I know he got shot before he lived, but this time he got shot. He died, came back three days later. He working on All Eyes on Me too. Album. It's a triple album. 
What? Who's going to believe that mess? So, here we got Jesus, which nobody talked about him while he was alive. Nobody. When the Bible claims that a great fame went out about him through all the land, when he had done these miracles, yet nobody talked about him during his actual time. He's spoken about after the fact. Anybody can speak something after the fact. That doesn't make it real. It doesn't make it real. No real inscriptions, no real nothing. Just a bunch of talk. Anyway. Talks. Well, text, talk. So we go from text, all the, oh, this historical thing, that historical thing. Nothing definite. And nothing definitely says that the Gospels and the magic he did in the Gospels is real. Nothing backs up those so-called miracles in the Gospels. It's not real. In one text, he deals with the man. Uh, and he got the, the demon legion in him. In the pigs... The, 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 the demons say, can we go into the pigs? Or the swine, they go into the pigs and run off the cliff and run into the water. Look it up. There is no water anywhere near there. No water. The pigs would have had to run anywhere from five to them, depending on which story you get from Luke or Matthew, anywhere from about five to 30 miles to run into some water and it wasn't off no hill into the waters. There was, no, there was no water there for them to... For one, they didn't sail into the area. That's like, I'm in the Atlanta area, and you said you sailed into Atlanta. I would say, that's a lot. There's, no, there's nothing where you can sail into Atlanta. No, you sailed in somewhere else and caught a train, bus or something, a bus, a car, Uber, something, but you can't sail into here because there's nowhere for you to sail into here. So there was nowhere there for them, for no pigs, to run off some cliff into the water and drown themselves. There's no water there, and you didn't sail in there. And so Matthew screwed it up so bad and put the place so far away from any water that Luke came along and put it a little closer, but still, that water is not that close. But who was expecting that back in the early century? When you drop these Gospels, you know, around about, uh, let's just say, what, 80 CE? 80, 90 CE? You didn't have Google Earth and Google Maps, all that. You didn't know all of this stuff. So, and the people couldn't read, so you didn't know. So you could pretty much save almost anything, and unless you was in the know, you didn't know. But these things are not true. And like they want to take Jesus and Jesus say whatever and they want to take him to the cliff in his city and throw him off the cliff to kill him. It's all flat land. There are no cliffs. There are no cliffs there. You go on Google Earth and look, it's all flat. There's no cliffs. What cliffs? It's a story. It's a story. So they want to talk, 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 talk. It's all text what somebody else said. And most of the stuff, it doesn't matter what's in the Old Testament. It doesn't even matter. It's all fake. The New Testament is, is my, my son asked me today, we were talking about, he said, what about the New Testament? We talked about the Old Testament. I said, the Old Testament has some history in it because they wrote it after the fact. They wrote it after the fact of certain things happened. They had already happened, everybody knew. You knew when Egypt was in power, they was in power. When Assyria was in power, they was it. When Babylon was it, they was it. When the Medes and Persians, or, or the Greeks, or the Romans, you knew who was in power. It was no big secret. They conquered people, people recorded it, and, but, but all of the backstories in the Bible behind all of that, is not there. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar, right? He came in, the Babylonian, 
and uh, he, he defeated a whole lot of stuff. But when they were talking about over seven years, he went crazy because he wouldn't admit God was the true God. He said, oh, God is the true God. That's, that's not true. You mention real people, but the stories are not real around them. It's not historical. That's part of your fable. It's not real. You understand what I'm saying? So, come to the, he said, what about the New Testament? I said, it's no different than the Spider-Man comic. Them people in the New Testament are just, I mean, you got, you got, a, you got a couple of people in the New Testament that are real, but you got to have real people in order to make it look real. Herod the Great was real. Caesar Tiberius was real. High Priest Caiaphas was real. Pontius Pilate was real. Now, let's talk about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Judas, Judas the Lesser, and you know, all of those people, and the different Simons, and all. They're not real. Paul, not real. Not real. And Acts comes back. Acts come back to take the character of Paul and try to make him from the letters that came out way before that. We got the letters of the character of Paul. Let's make a backstory on the character of Paul, like Wolverine, but it's not real. It's all just talk. None of this stuff ain't real. The New Testament is a comic book. It's not real. Lay hands, lay hands, go to the cancer unit, lay hands like the Bible said you should. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That came out the words of Jesus' mouth in that book. But you can't do it. None of y'all can do it. Guess why? Because it's not real. It's talk. Huh? Oh, the Bible, the Bible, Bible. Now they can't go to the Bible. Now we got to go to an extra biblical material where you're talking about things outside of the Bible. Oh, these ancient texts said this and said that and this and that. But to the, in, in, in 2020, you still don't have that power. Your ship's still sinking. Religion is still sinking. Where is the power today? It's still not here. Where is it? Talk, 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 talk. And in my experience, and so what happened, and I prayed, and I said, Lord, let this happen. Oh, Lord, and Lord, and it happened. 50-50 is chance. You can't call it. Prayer would be, it happens every time. People are like, every time I pray, it happens. You probably got money. Money and influence. Because if you got money, a lot of situations don't matter because you got money. You don't pray for something when you have the money for it. Oh, Lord, I need, I need the money for this mortgage. But if you, if you had the money for the mortgage, in your account, you wouldn't pray for it. You just pay it. Oh, my car need to be big. Lord, I need this $500. If you had the $500, guess what you wouldn't be doing? Praying for it because you got it. Religion is for poor people, not rich people. Do you ever think rich people pray before they pay something? Religion is for poor people. They don't pray for their rent because they own. They don't pray for things poor. They don't pray for food because they got plenty. Religion is for poor people and ignorant people, people that don't know. I'm not saying you're stupid. Ignorant means you just don't know. Rich people don't pray for that stuff. They got it. They got stocks and bonds and money coming. They're working money working for them and they're coming in. No, prayer is for poor people, people that don't know. And in fact, if you're praying, your job, you're making one of the rich people richer. That's how it works. That's the real deal. It's just ridiculous. Talk. In my experience, the experience is experiences, but it's not a system. And it doesn't work for everybody. Because where you prospered, somebody else lost. Where you lived, someone else died. Where you got healed by medicine, someone else got sicker and died. It's, it's not a system. But no matter which one happens, 
you all attribute it to the same person and give them credit for it, despite the fact that they did absolutely nothing. So you could talk about ancient texts and try to make it seem real, or oh, you won the battle because you knew more than this person. But it, but but look, we still ain't got to the big joker. What's the big joker? Look, text, talk, then the excuses. Excuses. Well, God, God know better than we know. He know better than we know. That way, he didn't do it because, you know what I'm saying, because he knew better than we knew. And I heard the Christian pastor say, well, the reason why God doesn't heal amputees is because they learn how to do things without those limbs, that things that we couldn't do. So why heal them? Because they learn how to do things. They can do things better than we can do without it. So he, ain't, he don't need to heal them. And then the same Christian pastor goes on to say that, you know, yeah, children have been snatched and, or people have been snatched and taken into, I guess, you know, uh, sex trafficking, which some of us know that's also organ, taking their organs, and, and know they're not going to come back and all of these things are happening, but, you know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace and when he comes back, he brings peace. So no, God is not going to do anything right now because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and when the Prince of Peace comes back, then he's going to set it all straight. So in essence, all you said was, my God is not going to do absolutely anything. That's what you said. And all that talk, your excuse was, your God is not going to do anything. And for those of us that already know, we already know, right, because he doesn't exist. You can't do things when you don't exist. Number one, in order to do things, number one, the first thing is you need to exist. Exist first. Boom, I exist. Now I can help. I can do things. He can't pass the first thing. He can't exist because he's just a figment of believers' imagination because you're called believers believers nobody that knows anyone do you know such and such yeah i know them and they'll ask you do you believe in such and such whoever asks you that about a, about a real person hey do you believe in uh in um uh, sanchez believe in sanchez what you mean yeah sanchez over there you believe in him what you mean believe in him do you know him yeah i know sanchez we cool oh okay why would you believe in somebody that you know. If you knew God, why would you believe in him? God talks to me. I believe in him. That's a contradictory statement already. God talks to me. I believe in him. That right there shows you have a mental disorder you're not, you're not familiar with. God talks to me. I believe in him. No, God talks to me. I know him. And if God can talk to you, he can talk to other people. Point blank. I don't know how you know somebody and believe in them. You know them and believe in them. What is that? That nobody's ever seen. Nobody's ever seen this person. I heard his voice. Where? In my head. In my head. You go to the psych ward, that's what they say. Why did you kill that person? Well, God told me to kill him. Why doesn't that stand up in court? But it does in church. Why doesn't that stand up in court? But it's cool in church. God told me to tell you. Hold on, I've been, I've been talking to God. God talks to me. So why'd he tell you? Why he tell me? God told me to tell you. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think? What did God think? What did God think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? But you you the one saying what it said. They was talking to you. 
Now he's not. He told somebody else to talk to you. Second person, third person, talking to you. It's foolishness to me. And that's why I'm just realizing, like I said, you know, I can't deal with religious people. I mean, like, I'm talking about an actual, an actual dialogue about the religion. We can talk about, we can talk about football, NBA, we can talk about regular things, food, we can talk about real stuff. But when it comes to talking about the fairy tale where Dungeons and Dragons, where God is, where God and Satan is all that is, we can't talk because I'm sorry to tell you, understand this. It's, it's, you, can, you can look it up for yourself. It's a psychological issue. The cognitive dissonance is a real psychological issue where believers do not have the ability. Hear me. They do not have the ability to reason in reality when it comes to religion. They can't do it. They can't do it. That's why people know it's important to indoctrinate children while they are young, before their brains are fully working, to put certain information in that you want to put it in before that brain solidifies. They understand that. That's why you got children's church. Right. Yeah, we already got the parents. Now let's make sure we get the kids. So, so parents, y'all are here. What are they teaching your kids in children's church? They're teaching them the fundamentals of the same bull crap to keep your children trapped in the same mess. That's what it is. And then the children are figuring out along the way that this stuff is just not real. They have a better chance than we did because they have internet and people talking in YouTube and and what and, and whatever they have out there for people to say, yo, this is just a bunch of bull crap. This stuff don't happen. It's, it's mythology. They're thinking on that aspect and they don't care. The young people today about a lot of stuff, they just don't care. They read tweets. They read tweets. They get the Snapchats and the Instagram pictures. You think they're going to read some old, boring book? They're not. Because guess what? You that are watching, when you was a Christian, how often did you read that Bible? I could never understand when I was on a job and I had women that would be there like they would buy those, uh, those novel books with the sex in it and what have you. And they was like, oh, I read that book in two days. In like 200, 300 pages. Two days. I, I can't get out. How'd you read it in two days? They read it in two, two to three days. Been a Christian 20 years. I ain't never read the whole book. Because the book is boring and it doesn't make sense. That's why they haven't read the book. Yeah, religion is just text, talk, and excuses. When, when I'm dealing with religious people, especially, like I said, online, and they're like a greased pig. They're not going to admit they're wrong, and you can't corner them because they're going to make up some type of lie or something to get out of it. This is how I see it. It's like that person that uh, goes to meet this boss. They have a super idea and they go to meet this boss who says he can take the idea and really blow them up. I could really use this idea. So what happens is he gets a call from a secretary to say come for the meeting. He shows up to have the meeting with the boss. The boss, of course, isn't there. It's like, okay, yeah, he's, he's not here. Some things happen. He's running a little bit late, but he's going to be on the way. 
okay, and you're waiting for the boss, and 15 minutes go by, 30 minutes go by, we get up to about 45 minutes, an hour, but the person's like, you know, they, they could really profit from meeting with this person to blow up their idea and make a lot of money. Hour goes by, and you're willing to wait because of the situation. Well, well yeah, I mean, he, he's stuck in traffic, he's stuck in traffic, but he's on the way. Okay, all right. They come back, hour, 45 minutes, then going by. Ah, oh, he had a flat tire, he called AAA. They're coming out there to fix his tire, but he's still on the way. All right. All right, two and a half hours, two hours, 45 minutes, we're at that, almost three hours go by. Ah, yeah, he's, 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 he's coming, he's coming. He's on the way, he's on the way. My people had talked to him, they said he's on the way. All right, all right, he's on the way, he's on the way. Now we're about four hours, and he's like, you ain't nothing to do anyway. So you're waiting because this is a great opportunity. You're at four hours now. They come in and say, ah, he had a family emergency in Colorado. He can't make it today. We're going to have to reschedule. And then you get to talking to the person like, wow, you know, this guy is really important. I went online and looked for a picture of him. I couldn't even find a picture of the guy. Yeah, he doesn't really like taking pictures. Nobody really, he doesn't, he doesn't take pictures. He just That's just how he is. Nobody takes pictures of him. And you'd be like, so have you met him? Well, actually, no, I've never met him. But from what I understand, you know, my boss um, has met him and, and talked to him. So you've never met him? No. How about anybody else here in the office? Anybody in the office ever met him? Well, actually, none of us have ever met him. I mean, he's, so, he's, he's a busy guy. He's a busy guy. None of us really get to talk to him. We never get to see him because he's just busy. You know, he's re he's hardly ever in the office. And if he's in the office, I mean, when he comes in, nobody really sees him come in. And he stays in the office. And when he leaves, he leaves so late, everybody's going home anyway. So we don't really get to see him. So you or nobody in here has ever seen the guy? No, we haven't seen him. We haven't talked to him anything. And there's no pictures of the guy. Well, no, he just doesn't take pictures. But your boss talked to him. Right. Yeah, my boss talked to him. Where's your boss? Well, he's not here. He's on vacation. But he's talked to the guy. Right. Who else has talked to the guy around here? Not very many people have actually talked to the guy. You know, we had a couple people here who've seen him. You know, when they, they were starting a the company and whatever, they talk with him, they know him and what have you. But none of y'all here have ever seen the guy. No, I mean, well, I mean, no, we, we just work and we get our paycheck and that's it, you know. So we're going to reschedule. I mean, th this is how I see believers doing all of that running. You can do all the running, but you can never show me the boss. Somebody talk to him. But you yourself has never seen him. You're willing to sit here and defend some mess you've never seen. Nobody talked to you about it. You're, you're not talking to a second-hand source, a third-hand source, a fourth-hand source, a fifth-hand source. We can keep going. We're talking about a book that people, the Bible, a book that people rely on that's not even an original. It's copies of copies of copies of copies going to another, translated to another language. Copies of copies of copies. There were no printing presses. It was all written by hand. And do you think these people did not change things along the way? They're tired. They mis misunderstood something. They mix words up. Things are changed. And what's that one Bible they got called? The, uh, uh, what is that Bible? Because one word got messed up and they called it something. I cannot remember right now. Like the frog Bible, or the, the bird Bible. Or I, I can't remember. Maybe I can put it on the screen if I can find it. Because they mistranslated this one word in there. And so they called it the something Bible because that one word was mistranslated, which was not supposed to be in there. No different than Lucifer. The word Lucifer should not be in the Bible. It's a mistranslated word. Lucifer is not a name. Lucifer is the same word in another language as phosphorus. Bearer of light. And it was not supposed to be there. The word there was supposed to be helal, which was a bolster. It had no business being there. Well, let me get back to what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's translations of translations, and we don't even have it. And in, in, uh, we can't read the language it came in. The crazy part is, is that they say that the, uh, 
the, the oldest copies of the Old Testament that they actually have. The oldest copies are the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation from the supposed Hebrew. Supposed, right? The oldest copies are actually Greek and not Hebrew. Now, if you want to get into all of that, go to the, um, the Real Merkaba. He got a channel. That dude does a lot of research. He, he researching. He travels. He go. He he goes deep with a lot of things. He talked about that to say that is it really the Hebrew came from the from the Greek. But don't I'm saying I'm saying what he said. For everybody, to jump on me. I'm telling you what he said. He was saying that really that the Hebrew version came from the Greek version. The real Merkaba, go check it out yourself. Don't put it on me, that's what he said. Also, when I talked to y'all before about the guy that wrote the book called uh, Hebrew is Greek. Long book, the actual book costs like hundreds of dollars, like eight, nine hundred dollars, but you can just read it online. <clears throat> In the book, he explains how Hebrew is really just a Greek language. It comes, it comes from the Greek. That's what he, he says. He says, it's a whole book. I didn't write none of it. I'm just telling you what, what it says. But but you have to think, this God would have to be the God of stupidity. The God of stupidity. To number one, in order to relay your message hundreds of years later or a thousand years later, to one, want to write them down where men have the ability to change your words. Number one. That's just stupid. Two, write them on parchments. You can create the whole world, but not understand that parchments, after time, begin to disintegrate. They break down. They didn't have enough sense. God didn't have enough sense like the Egyptians and the, uh, the Babylonians and the Assyrians to write it in stone. You know what I'm saying? But to write it on parchments. Then later from the oxygenation and everything is going to break down. You know, so now your, your, your message, here it is. You, you, it, it's stupid. The God of stupidity is what it has to be. So now years later people can write your stuff in their own version according to what's going on that benefits them to manipulate people while you sit back and say absolutely nothing while you're message that is so important that you only gave to a group of people in a pinpoint on the map in order to go out to the whole world it's stupid that had to be the god of stupidity the god of stu all the all the uh the contradictions and and and, and it just lies it's stupid stupid uh, it's nothing more i can say and talk about the word ignorance. It would say the base of the word ignorance. Yeah, you don't know, but the base of the word ignorance is you ignore the knowledge. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know, but you ignore what's there. Ignorant. Ignorance. Ignorance. You don't want to know. And, like, and these, these believers, I'm trying to tell y'all, hear, hear me when I tell you this. They do not have the ability to separate reality from fantasy. Anytime you endorse the Bible is real, and in, the, and in the third chapter of this book, in the third chapter of this book, a serpent is speaking to a woman. If at this point in the book, you have not realized it is fiction and you take this to be reality, you automatically have a mental disorder. You have a mental disorder when you're starting to believe these things that absolutely cannot happen. It can't happen. We can go through all of the stories and people will tell you in modern day terms the things that couldn't happen. Lot was with was uh his daughters made him drunk. And then the first daughter had sex with him the first night and she got pregnant. 
got him drunk again the next night, and then, and then the next daughter, the, other, the younger daughter, she had sex with him, and then she got pregnant. It's so much wrong with that story. One, when you get to a certain drunkenness, you cannot maintain an erection. That's number one. And I don't know how drunk you got to be to have sex with your own daughters. I... I would have to be passed out drunk to have sex with one of my daughters. But if I was passed out, there's no way I could maintain an erection, yet alone have an ejaculation. You understand this? It's, it's, it's a, uh, the people in the mental, uh, mental field, in the medical field, will, will tell you this is impossible. That you cannot get that drunk and one, have an erection, and two, have an ejaculation. And if you've ever had sex as a man and you're a super drunk, you have, you, it, you, it's hard to ejaculate. You are so numb, you can't do it. You're just going through the motions. If it's not that, you're not going to even get erect. Then two, let's go to the girls. Both of them happen to be ovulating at the same time. They both got to be ovulating for this to happen. So there's just so much wrong with these stories that the, it's, it's written in a time before we knew all of these things. But you're dealing with a people who have believed in the beginning that a serpent talked to a woman, had a whole conversation, and the serpent had legs and everything, and the serpent was the devil, which nowhere does it say the serpent was the devil. Nowhere in the text does it insinuate there is a, there's no way you could have read that text when it came out and then been like, you read it, and the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field that the Lord God had created. And then he said to the woman, and then you would finish that whole story and be like, ooh, that was Lucifer, wasn't it? And somebody was like, who is Lucifer? Satan? Who is Satan? Oh, they're going to come hundreds of years later, but that's who he's talking about. It doesn't mention that at all. It says the serpent calls him an animal, curse him as an animal, explains to you where the snake came from and why he doesn't have legs. Just another tale from back then. A lot of tales about snakes. Snakes are, are the cobra is on the head, the headpiece or the headrest, the headpiece of the Egyptians. Now that's because not only could the snake just do like this, but the snake could rise up and sit up and lunge forward. So not only could he lay like this, but he could rise up and strike. There's more to it. When you look at your ambulance and your hospitals, what is that? The two serpents wrapped around a, around a, 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 a rod or what have you, right? So there, there's more to it than that. People don't understand the purposes of a, of a serpent and the stories that go behind that, which is why it's used. And then they talk about it, and oh, Revelation says that old serpent, Satan. Which old serpent? Any serpent. If, if the book of Revelation was written probably in the second or third century, okay, well, which serpent are you talking about? That old serpent. Oh, the one that theology told you was the old serpent. The one back here. Right, yeah, 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 okay. Make it fit. Make it fit. That's your job, to make it fit. Because all in all, they can't show you anything. Religion is text. Oh, well, oh, it says here, and this person said they mentioned a Jesus or they mentioned a great man, but nobody substantiated all the miracles and bringing folks back from the dead and walking on the water, multiplying food, flipping tape. Nobody, nobody substantiated none of this stuff. You heard a mention of a name, a name, and they said they got to be talking about him. My oldest son named Michael, right? And I read something, and I'm reading something that says Mike. I'm reading the newspaper, and I read something that says, it says Michael. And I'll be like, that's my son. They talk about my son. How many Michaels are there? My name is William. How many Williams are there? How many William Joneses are there? You have no idea how many William Joneses are there when I go through stuff. And I say, my name is William Jones. They say, what's your middle initial? And I got to tell them my middle, middle initial. And then they say, no, what's your middle name? And I say, my middle name. Spell it. 
it's that many William Joneses out here. And then it said somebody said Jesus. Which one? I mean, because Joshua, Yahshua, was a common name. That wasn't exclusive. There's power in the name. Then why were so many people named that name? How is it power in a name that's just as common in that in that area as Muhammad is in Islam? How is it powering his name? So it's power in the name of William. They know William. Which one? If my name was so exclusive, no one else should have it. Yahshua. Joshua. Same name. Jesus. Hey, Zeus. Zeus. Ain't no power in that name. No, we know ain't no power in that name. Bunch of texts, talk, excuses. Let's say it again. Text, talk, excuses. Well, it said, this scholar said this, so what? I don't care what any scholar said. You don't bring nobody back from the dead. You don't walk on water. You don't multiply fish. You don't, you don't lay hands on somebody, they, they heal their blindness and deafness, or they just get up and walk. Come on. Text, talk. Well, I, hey, I, I experienced a miracle. You can't explain it. That's why you call it a miracle, because you can't explain it. Once we can explain it, it ain't no longer a miracle. If we went by that mess, nothing would, would advance. We have a medical field now because they couldn't go by miracles. They got to find out what's actually happening. Oh, we found out a thing called adrenaline. And when a person is in a fight or flight mode, there's this liquid that, that's in the, produced in the body and it pumps in to give them a superhuman strength. And it's called adrenaline. And it allows them to do something to either fight or flight. We, we, you learn these things, right? You, you couldn't explain it then, you explain it now. Lightning happening. Ooh, that's got to be the, the god Thor or Zeus, his lightning bolts, something. Then we learn to explain it and the gods are gone. Same thing with miracles. Just because you can't, you can't explain it doesn't mean it's something supernatural. It's a matter of where you are and what happens. I mean, we have things that happen and with near misses. Some things are not near misses for the people. That the non-miracle? It's, it's, you can't call it. There is no such thing as a miracle. There is no such thing as supernatural. You can't test supernatural. These are all religious terms to try to hide things because they have absolutely no evidence. There's no miracles, there's no supernatural, and then they talk about it and then you can make something from nothing. Can you? First we have to have nothing. Let's find nothing and test to nothing. Well, y'all atheists say that the, um, there was a big bang. If there was a bang and there was nothing, what bang? Well, y'all say that, that something can come from nothing. You, something can't come from nothing, but God made something from nothing. And everything got to come from something. So where did your God come from? Or what God has always been. Now you're bending and breaking the rules. So now your God has always been, but you first you just, but you just said so, something got to come from something. It can't come from nothing. So if something got to come from something, and your God is always, how can your God always been? If he's something, he had to come from something. And I know what he came from, a pen. An idea, and a, a carving or a pen, somebody wrote it down, and that's where your God comes from, the mind of a man. How we all got here, we don't know. Nobody knows, but it doesn't make your God real. Oh, and I experienced a miracle, and so did the, the so did the Muslim. So now is Allah real? Because he's he's convinced that Allah did his miracle. He, you can't tell him any different than nobody can tell you that Yahweh did yours. So now if his God is real, then Yahweh has lied saying he's the only true God. Because now there is another God, Allah, or Shiva, right? All the other gods we can go through in the different languages or different religions and name. They have their experiences and miracles too. So what makes you all so exclusive now?
because that was the one you were taught all your life and never check anything else. You never check anything else. You believed everything you were told. How many of y'all seen the movie Wanted? With Angelina Jolie, Morgan Freeman, Common is in the movie, and the, and the main dude plays uh, Professor Xavier on the later X-Men. And if y'all haven't seen the movie Wanted, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, don't watch this, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie Wanted, you know about 10 years old, is that the man's father was an assassin in a uh, fraternity, and they told him how his father went rogue and was killing people he wasn't supposed to kill and doing things he wasn't supposed to do. And then the man was trying, he, the man thought his father was trying to kill him and trying to kill the people in the fraternity. So they trained the boy, his son, to kill his own father. The boy ends up learning how to be a, a, a great assassin. They bend in bullets. The bullets curve around stuff. These guys don't miss when they shoot. And even when his father shot him, his father shot him in the arm. How do assassins that don't miss hit him in the arm? There was a message to him. At the end, the guy finds out his father, he gets to his father. His father trying to save his life. What does he do? Kill his father. Come to find out, his father was right. His father was trying to save him from the fraternity. But the fraternity reached him first. And they put in his mind that his father was the bad guy. Come to find out, Morgan Freeman was the bad guy. And he was altering the names of people that were supposed to be killed because even those assassins themselves were supposed to be killed. But he didn't honor that. He changed everything for profit. That's what happened. So it was a matter of who got to him first. Come to find out his father was nothing that they told him he was. He was his father was trying to rescue him from the fraternity before they corrupted him. And this is how it is with religion. Religion comes to you as a child and they get to you first and they corrupt you and make you think that this God is real and everything else is fake and everything else is of the devil. Don't even look into it because it's all of the devil. And if you read it, the devil will get your mind. Translation, devil get your mind and religion mean you start thinking for yourself using some common sense. You start using some logic and some reason. That's what the devil got your mind means in religion. You're thinking. That's what it means. So they get to you first. You're a child doing the Easter egg hunts, which make no sense. And all this other stuff in church. You in children's church teaching you about Noah showing the two little giraffes and the two lions, and they all got along because you don't understand real life. And when you start to question it, those that don't know tell you don't question God, and those that do know tell you it's things outside the Bible that you don't understand. That's why when you get grown, you got these lying pastors out here talking about some extra biblical sources. Well, it was said here, this person said this, the Bible, y'all say the Bible is the truth, the Bible is the all in all, now, all of a sudden, the Bible needs help. Now, the Bible needs help. Because the Bible is sinking. The Bible is sinking like Peter in the water. And the extra biblical lies is what is trying to pull the Bible up to get people to believe it again. Because young people are not into belief. Into belief that this doesn't make sense. Stupid stuff. Text, talk, and excuses. But they'll never show you their boss in the office. Okay, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. Yeah, I can't find his pictures. I mean, yeah, I know you're busy. You say he's in the office? Can I go in the office and talk to him? No, you can't go in there and talk to him. But he's in there, right? Yeah. Why well, I can't go talk to him? The reason you can't go in the office and talk to the boss is because there's no boss in that office. And the people that are talking to you, that's the boss. Those pastors and bishops and apostles and prophets that's telling you everything, they're the actual boss. When you go to the actual office, 
It's nobody in there. It's like the Wizard of Oz all over again. The man back there pulling the strings and blowing smoke. That's it. But there ain't, there ain't no real God back there. Ain't no real Jesus coming back. Because those that know the Bible know Jesus said he was coming back in that generation. There are some of you standing here now that won't die until you see the kingdom of heaven. Some of y'all here. He was coming back then. Here we are in 2020. People talking about he coming back. Guess what? He ain't coming back. He didn't come back in the worst times in history. And he's, he's never coming back because he's just a myth. They can get mad. They can get glad. Have a way trash bag. He's not coming back. He doesn't exist. You got to exist and come the first time in order to come back. Right? And he ain't never been here. So Jesus is just a myth. For those of you watching, if you're new, Jesus is a myth. And if you like, I'm going to tell anybody, and a lot of us, your final two obstacles, I know for me, the final two obstacles, the number one obstacle to leaving religion while you're scared to leave is hell. You're scared to go to hell. If, if, if the last obstacle for you is you are scared to go to hell, you are already out of religion. There is no hell. Hell does not exist. That was the fear tactic to keep people in that wanted to leave, is that we have the ability to punish you after death. People commit suicide to escape life, to be free. But they knew that, so in order for me to... Because if you're dead, I can't control you anymore. I can't control you when you're dead. When that person shoots up something and kills 30 people, and oh, we can catch him. If we can catch him, we can put him in jail and punish him. But when he puts a bullet through his brain, it's like, damn, there's nothing we can do. He killed himself. So the fear tactic is... To not let you kill yourself because you're scared to go to hell. Keep you alive because we can only control you on this side. Because when you're dead, there's nothing they can do to you. So they have to convince you while you're living that we can do something to you after you're dead. Alright, people, I had an interruption. Break them out of my train of thought from what I was saying. But I think I kind of said it enough. Okay? Bottom line is, religion is just its just a bunch of crap. It's coming to an end. People are waking up. And the, uh, the sad part is, these lying leaders keeping these people in bondage. When they come to them looking for real answers, they're going to give them some religious answers and try to tell them, no, 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 don't, don't listen to them people. Jesus is real. Can't show you nothing. Nothing. I asked them today, tell them just leave this before I say this. I asked them today, give me the birth dates and the death dates of any of your main characters in the Bible. Like I said, when I was talking about Nebuchadnezzar, we could give a birth date and the death date. Sennacherib, we could tell you when he reigned, we could tell you around the exact times. You know, there's certain people you talk about, Alexander the Greek, you could talk about uh, Sargon the second. You, we can go back and you could talk about uh, Pharaoh Minerpta. Uh, we could talk about uh, Cleopatra. We could talk about um, uh, Ankhenaten, Tutankhamun. We could talk about all these people, you know, and they have actual, like, birth dates and deaths. You know something. But but then when they come to those Bible characters, you don't know nothing. You can't tell me what Pharaoh was the Pharaoh when Moses was there. When they have extensive records and don't have no record of no Israel being there. You can't tell me when Joshua was around when he fought all these battles. You can't tell me exactly when Isaiah was around. It's like you can't, you can't, you can't really date anything in the Bible. It's a 200-year range or something. You don't really know because fictional characters don't have birth dates and don't have death dates. They just float them around because they're fictional. So I'm gonna end on that note in this video, and I will see y'all in the next one. And if y'all like the videos, like the videos, send it to your family, friends, subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.